Some of the worst violence in years has broken out between Israelis and Palestinians. At its height last week, a Palestinian attack outside a synagogue left seven people dead and provoked widespread condemnation, including from the Arab world. A day earlier, Israeli forces had raided the Janine refugee camp in the occupied West Bank. Ten people died, most of them reported to be gunmen. On a visit to Israel, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken called on both sides to calm tensions and said a two-state solution was the only way to end the conflict. My guest this week is the head of the Palestinian mission to the U.K., Hossam Zomlot. Does he believe that's possible? We see no approach to, to achieve that. But does the Palestinian leadership have the authority among its own people to negotiate with Israel and unite the different factions? Why the never-ending allegations of brutality and corruption in its ranks? Isn't it time for a new leader who can earn the trust of his people and the outside world? Well, Sam Zomlat, welcome to Complex Zone. Thank you, Tim. Where is all this violence leading? All this violence is absolutely leading to one fact, that until a new Palestinian generation is born free of occupation, colonization, and apartheid, and no matter how uh, more Israeli brutality will be, more brutality, more oppression, no matter international complicity, nothing will change until that is achieved. What can stop it? This violence. Killing now, the... this current Killing... phase of violence, what can stop it? One of the main reasons why people are losing their lives, because for many years we have been talking about two-sidedism. For many years we have been talking about negotiations and peace processes. For many years we have drawn the wrong parallels between the occupied and the occupier, the colonized and the colonizer. For many years we receive you as secretary of states and presidents, mediators, without addressing the real issues. For many years, we are hearing these statements that the U.S. and Europe and the U.K. is with the two-state solution. Now, uh, Secretary Blinken calls for equal measures of freedom, of opportunity, of dignity and security. He's still for calling for the two-state solution. What's Israelis? your response to that? Without any approach. We see no approach to, to achieve that. No where's, your, where's, where's your approach even, to that? Where's even, your approach to that? Our, our approach, where's the Palestinian approach? Palestinian people have been subjected to 100 years since the Balfour Declaration promising our land without consulting us. Until today, we are living on our land. We are resilient and resisting all the illegalities. And we are growing. We have our universities and professors and poems. And where are we? We have withstood all the pressure. And we are there to defend our rights. And our rights now are enshrined in international consensus from the time of the beginning of Zionism, when it started to say that there, are, there is no such a thing as Palestinian people, to do today, where you have in the United Nations the tag of the state of Palestine. Let's, we let's have come back to the present. Let's come back process. to the present, mm. Mr. Zomlad. The Palestinian attack last Friday outside the synagogue on the outskirts of Jerusalem provoked outrage around the world, including, including among many Arab countries. In the past, the Palestinian Authority has condemned attacks on unarmed civilians. Why not this time? Let's talk about that. Why not this time? Let's talk about that, okay? Every human loss is a tragedy. And you know very well, Tim, throughout the years that our strategy has been a non-violent popular resistance reverting to international judicial system and international institutions. This is our strategy. But let's talk about so that. So what are you saying? That it's let's out talk, of control, let, the let's violence? Talk, let's talk about that. On your let, side, it's out of control? Let, let, let's talk about that. No. The, the sole responsibility of that incident that you talk about is on Israel's government. The world doesn't see it that way, the, Mr. Zomla. The world why, doesn't see it. Even why, the Arab world doesn't why, see it that's that way. Why, that's why I accept your invitation to come and to tell the world the truth as it is. The truth is, the Israeli government sends illegally, it's a war crime, its citizens to illegal settlements. Neve Yaqub is an illegal settlement in the occupied East Jerusalem. The full responsibility of what happened lies squarely on the government that sends these civilians to commit acts of war crimes and illegality. Okay, you keep of saying, course, you we keep do not saying, condemn violence. You keep saying it's their responsibility. For the last 10 months, there have been mm. plenty of warnings should, about a worsening security should situation. We stop saying can, I, can, I, can I just should finish we stop the saying? question? Can I finish the question? By November, the UN said the conflict was reaching boiling point. Did no one take any notice? How hard did the Palestinian Authority try to stop this particular phase of violence? The hardest. How hard? The hardest. What did they do? I'll tell what did you, they do? One major thing is to be so 
religious about international law, is to be so principled about international law and the use of international legal system. We reverted this to the International Criminal Court because we want to establish accountability. And we, only last month, asked for an advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice, that's the highest international legal system, to create accountability because it is the lack of accountability that has gotten us to where we are today with this most far-right fanatics of government in Israel. And guess what, Tim? And this is the real discussion. Who blocks us from going to these international judicial organs? It's the United States. Vote, uh, vote against us. It's the United You went Kingdom. anyway. It's you went, any, you we, went, you we went will, anyway. And we will keep uh, 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 anyway. But you know, when international rules and law is tested, when it comes and applied to your friend, and there is the West where it has been failing for all these years. When it comes to Israel, and compare that to Ukraine, by the way, when it comes to Israel, Israel is always shielded by the West, shielded by the US and the UK from any right, accountability. Mr. Mr. Zomla, any accountability. This is the Mr. heart of Mr. the issue. Mr. Blood, there haven't been any meaningful peace talks for almost 10 years. How do you emerge from this unending cycle of blame and violence? Jewish Israelis think they are the exclusive victims in this conflict. Palestinians say they're the victims. You're a diplomat. How can you help move the discussion on from this point? By being principled, by uh, uh, stop wasting time, by really addressing the real suffering of the people. Our people has been under aggression for 100 years, started in this Let's country. Let's talk concrete terms. No, no, the no, Palestinian no, no. It's, it president, no, is, the Palestinian is, president Mahmoud Abbas, said last year he had no choice but to deal with Benjamin Netanyahu. Is that still the case? And if so, what kind of dealings is he going to have with Mr. Netanyahu? Let's talk concrete. Uh, concrete. Facts. Concrete. Yeah. Mr. Netanyahu will not deal with us. We have no partner in the Israeli side. Mr. Netanyahu has That's formed... what he says. No, no, that's what he does also. Mr. Netanyahu has formed the government. The first sentence of the agreement of that coalition only a few weeks ago is that this government will commit to the land of Israel from the river to the sea and will accelerate the colonization in the occupied West Bank. Here you have it, right in front of everybody, hitting you in the face, the whole world. This government does not only not commit to the two-state solution, but will actively seek to destroy it, to dismantle it. So there will be no uh, what attempt part, to what talk to Netanyahu, is the, that right? Attempt, you dismissed him a long time no, ago. Uh, in the past, you said he was someone who was very extreme I in every sense. He said, you, uh, ha you have a dream, and that dream is that we Palestinians vanish and simply cease to exist. This is what you said we about him. him. So you, 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 you we aren't going to have any contacts with we him. Dismissed you him. aren't going to try, are this, you? This, 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 this person, this man, won the first election in 1997, just a few months after Rabin was assassinated by an Israeli Jew. And this person won on the ticket that he will derail the Oslo peace process, derail the whole two-state solution, and he brags about it, and he is so happy saying every morning and every evening that he has devastated the international consensus about a two-state solution. So deal with him on what grounds? On what grounds? This is exactly how we started this discussion. We need to focus on the real issues. And the real issues is the lack of accountability that will bring in different leaders in Israel. The Israeli people feel a sense of impunity and no consequences, no cost associated with all these illegalities. And therefore, and therefore they will Mr. keep Zomla. producing these fanatics like Ben Gvir and Smotrich Mr. and what have Mr. Zamla, to the Americans, the real deal is the two-state solution. No question of moving forward on that? Absolutely uh, uh, not in your eyes? Of course, this is our, our, our platform. Since 1988, we have fully recognized the two-state solution, allied ourselves completely with international resolutions, and law even recognized the state of Israel on the 1967. Your, your, people, your people aren't, aren't supporting it anymore. Uh, 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 Poll last uh, uh, week, Palestinian Center for Policy and Research showed two-thirds of Palestinians are against it, as well as 53% of Israelis. Hasn't got a chance, uh, has no, it? No, but they're not against it because they don't want to see the military occupation ending that began in 1967. Not they're, against they're it because against they don't the two want... They're against the two-state solution. Why no, no, are no, they I'll against tell you why. it? I'll tell you what, not against us because they don't want their freedom and independence and liberty in that territory with East Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. Not against us because they don't want to see refugees return to their properties and, and homes. They're against it because they believe it's not possible. They are against it now because it's a protest vote to say that we see no international action in this direction. We, soon, we see no Israeli constituency pushing in that direction. And why should we endorse it? Of course, that's a reaction.
Do Palestinians, ordinary Palestinians, even listen anymore to, to you, to their leaders? Isn't it a fact that the new militant groups in the West Bank no longer listen to the authority? The Nablus Brigade, the Tubas Brigade, the Lion's Den, they're all outside your control, aren't they? Well, people are, are people. They, they, they follow their guts. And, uh, you know, uh, we well, have... Well, if you can't we stop have, their we violence, are, who are, can, we, apart we, from we, Israel? We... we, we uh, uh, no. Listen, the Palestinian side has been the only side committed to the Oslo provisions for a long time. Actually, it has stayed, overstayed its welcome, our commitment, for a long time, up until only last week. You've just suspended every, security up coordination. Until last week. Uh, uh, Again, the, uh, many times you've done that. Uh, yeah, security coordination was meant to stop the illegalities, was meant to stop the invasions and the raids, was meant to provide, provide protection to, uh, to our people. Security coordination was meant to backroll occupation. Security coordination was meant to be a, a cornerstone in building our state. That is no longer holding and that's why it stopped. And it can only resume or be resumed once it is part of liberation, not part of continuing the status quo as Israel has been using it. And not only in the security sphere, in every sphere, the Israeli mentality must change. The Palestinian national institutions are there to achieve our national rights, are there to be subjected and answered to the Palestinian people. They need to understand that. Let's talk about the Palestinian national institutions. Hasn't, hasn't the Palestinian Authority itself become responsible for holding back progress? Last year, the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change warned of what it called a deepening crisis in Palestinian politics and a breakdown of the Palestinian leadership that's led the Palestinian cause and its standing to go backwards. That's right, isn't it? The Blair Institute can say whatever it wants. Uh, yeah, they're not the only uh, ones. Uh, well, the, well, they, they can say whatever they want. We have national institutions. We have the Palestine Liberation Organization that I represent here in London. My office is the PLO, representative office to the United Kingdom. I headed the PLO office in Washington. The world recognized the Palestine Liberation Organization as the umbrella organization. We have all Palestinian political factions represented in that umbrella organization, except Hamas. There is a process uh, uh, of dialogue right now to include everyone, but the PLO remains to be the representative of the Palestinian people. There is uh, internal uh, elections in that. We need to improve it. There is a huge room of, of improvement. We are not saints, and under the most adverse circumstances, no one should expect us to act like saints. Yet, we need to deliver some sort of institutional setting and democracy that our people deserve and seek. You're talking about getting democracy. There haven't been elections since 2006, and 74% of your people want Mahmoud Abbas to go. Um, your population, ha most of your population, hasn't even had the chance to vote at all. The Palestinian Authority is too scared to test itself in, with elections. That's not true. The Palestinian Authority, uh, again, it's the PLO that runs the show. The Palestinian Authority is an organ, is, a, is an offshoot of the PLO. Yet, we, are, we have been one of the few in the region to conduct elections, as you very well remember. We we conducted elections in 2005 and 2006, and when the results came out, it was here, London and Berlin and uh, Washington, who actually completely boycotted the results and sent shockwaves in our system and our ability to conduct our uh, uh, governance. We have issues. We want to co convene elections. By the way, the source of our legitimacy has been elections. Even Yasser Arafat, the late Yasser Arafat, uh, who knew that he was the father of the nation, had to get the approval of his people and offered himself for elections in 1996. But we have issues. We cannot and will not convene elections according to the Israeli the definition of elections. Elections should start in the occupied East Jerusalem. We have 300,000. What about your definition? We what have, about your definition? Have, You're 17, uh, Mahmoud Abbas is I'll 17 tell, years into okay, a four-year term. I'll, I'll tell you about 17 years President into a four-year term. President Abbas was elected by his people. President Abbas was a founder of the national liberation movement. Fatah, Fatah according to all polls, still is in the leading of the Palestinian uh, 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 political popularity. If you may, President Abbas is the head of the PLO. President Abbas is not just the, the, the president of the Palestinian Authority. It's very important to make that distinction. He has that capacity, the legitimacy of all these institutions, yet, yes, we need to offer 
the Palestinian people the ability to convene elections, and we need to sort out. When? When? We need to sort out Israel's veto over East Jerusalem. We have 300,000 Palestinian Jerusalemites. They have the absolute right to actually vote their, their uh, you know, cast their vote and decide who their president and who their parliament is. But also, we will not allow Israel, especially in light of Trump's illegality of recognizing Jerusalem, we will not allow Israel to pocket Jerusalem should we not convene elections in Jerusalem. And we need to make sure that Gaza the two million besieged in Gaza are fully in included in that. And hopefully the, the, the answer to your one, it must happen yesterday. So there is a process. Algeria is involved. Egypt, of course, is a major player here. But you are absolutely right. Elections is overdue and we must convene it. Hanan Ashrawi, former top PLO leader, said recently of the Palestinian Authority, the weaker the system, the more it closes in on itself and the more oppressive it becomes. The future could be peaceful, she said, but the longer it takes to see real change, the more probable violence becomes. If you don't allow for peaceful democratic ways of transferring power, people will find other means to express themselves. That's, that's a warning from a very senior and very much respected official the PLO. She is. She is. Yeah. And, and, she's and who's entitled. taking any notice? And a new leader she, uh, with a fresh political mandate would change the situation of your people, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, she is. And that tells you Hanan is in Ramallah. She, she was on the executive committee of the highest Palestinian political structure, that is the PLO. And this tells you we are a vivid society. There is the freedom of expression. There are different views. Actually, there are too much different views. And people express uh, uh, their views, which is welcome. But one point here, one point. There are some, Hanan is very genuine, wanting to make sure that our institutions are democratic and we will live up to that. But there are some people who misuse this to say that Palestinians have brought it upon themselves, that because they are not united, because they are mismanaged, the occupation is, is, is continuing. You're not and united. Open, and the oppression is continuing. I'm sorry. We are united. As a people. With Hamas? As a people. With Hamas? We are, as a people, we are united. We have political differences uh, uh, between political factions. Fatah sees the liberation strategy in a different way. Uh, Hamas sees it in a completely opposite way. We are now engaging, but the people of Palestine are United. And I can You've give been you, engaging for years and getting nowhere. I can give and you a hundred examples of the people's unity from 2021 and the Sheikh Jarrah and what happened and the whole Palestinian nation inside Israel itself, in the occupied territories, in Gaza, outside, uniting in one voice. And the same thing repeated itself last week when Israel raided Jenin. We are a united people. How many we times have I heard this and how many times has it proven to be untrue? I want to pick you up on something you said earlier. You talked about freedom of speech. Despite years of promising to improve your human rights records, the violations continue. There is no political will to change, is there? Take torture. The UN Committee Against Torture said last August it was concerned about consistent reports, consistent, that persons in custody in both the West Bank and Gaza are subject to torture and ill treatment. Are you ashamed of that? Well, nobody should be subjected to uh, torture, and we as a nation under are you ashamed under, of that? And we as a nation under oppression for all these years should behave in a in a certain manner that respects human rights. But you don't. Uh, uh, but uh, you don't. Uh, 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 <laughs> one by one. Again. We operate under a very adverse circumstances. Some people want us to behave in a certain manner, and we should. But we need to remember, we need to remember, democracy is incomplete under the boots of a military occupation, because they decide if you run elections in this, and if you do, then they will arrest those who are running the elections. And if they don't arrest them before they win or before they run, they arrest them after so. You're telling me the Israelis are responsible for you torturing your own people? No, no, no. I'm telling you the situation overall cannot be measured or judged according to a, a standard that you apply on a normal situation. People should never be tortured anywhere, including in Palestine. That's, that's completely uh, uh, rejected. But I want to revisit the whole idea of this whole Palestinian behavior. Because there is a school of thought that wants to link our birthright, as in the right of self-determination, to our behavior. No, sir, I want to say we should behave, but should we misbehave, we don't lose our rights. We were united during Yasser Arafat time, Fatah and Hamas and everybody. Yasser Arafat was, you know, the father of the nation. You saw what the Israelis can did we, to Can him. we stay with, with the, the, the no, press? No, no, no. Can we stay did, with the press? Did we, no, no. 
Because the present is, is bad enough. Of course, but the, the past was as, 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 and, and as bad. Did we achieve our rights? Did we conclude the peace process when we are united? So this whole unity thing is an internal Palestinian matter that we need to sort it for our own priorities. It has nothing to do with our rights or the engagement with the Israelis or the international community. Why do you keep promising year after year to do something about human rights and then nothing happens? Of particular concern has been the case of the civic activist Niza Banat, who died in detention in 2021 after being arrested and apparently beaten and severely tortured by your Hebron preventative security forces. Why no accountability for that death? And why do the 13 people who were put on trial allowed out on a nine-day holiday last year? from detention what know, sort of what sort of a farce is this i don't know where you get your what sort of a farce is this i don't know where you get your information uh, from uh, that incident was absolutely regrettable rejected by the palestinian people and there was a it happened it, it happened and it was wrong that it happened so we, that's where we, i got we, my information of course from. of course of course but then at least we got the all these officers to a court and they were uh, uh, indicted all of them uh, and uh, uh, accountability happened but the question I want to be asked is how many uh, Israeli settlers have attacked the Palestinians over the land? That was one incident. One guy lost his life, regrettably. How many Palestinians lost their lives over the last year or the last few years? 230 only in 2022, the highest since the UN began record in Palestine. 35 since last month, only January 2023. Some of them are done by Israeli civilians who are very armed. How many Israel have brought to justice? Did they bring to, to justice the, the, the people who burned Ahmed Dawabshi? Do you know that the, the, the person who shot uh, 29 worshippers in Al Khalil in Hebron in the 90s, 1993, Baruch Goldstein, is now worshipped in Israel? More than 10,000 visit him. You see, there is a lot of focus on sporadic isolated events in Palestine, but there is a lack of focus on the systematic, chronic lack of accountability, lack of democracy, the presence of apartheid. If you, if you were... That is the discussion. Because Mr. Then, Zomna, if you were an Israeli official sitting there, I would be asking you these questions. But I'm asking you about what the Palestinians no, no. do because you're a representative am, of the we Palestinians. Should, we should do more. Answer, answer me this question. How hard is it to champion the cause of the Palestinians around the world these days? It's, 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 it's very inspiring. I feel so privileged. It is the honor of my life. And I am so inspired wherever I go. Are you losing the hope US? that you will make progress? Uh, come see yeah. my heart. It's full of hope. If you see what I see every day, I leave you here and I go to the London School of Economics where there are three major universities convening a talk for Palestine, the London School, the UCL and Kings. Come and see the students, come and see the generations of the future. Uh, uh, I'm sure you've seen what happened in London in 2021 when Israel attacked Al-Aqsa and, uh, and, uh, and the Sheikh Jarrah and in Gaza. There were, there, were, there were tens of thousands. I did not expect to see that roar of people. People are people everywhere. More than 50 Every, years everywhere. of occupation. Do you think you'll live to see a two-state solution? What Anthony Blinken talked uh, of, an independent Palestinian state living side by side with Israel. Do you think you'll live to see that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How? But, how, how will that oh, come oh, about? Don't, how? don't despair them. The trajectory of things are absolutely in our side. When Israel was established, primarily it's beginning with this country, uh, there was no even recognition of our existence. In the Balfour Declaration, 67 words, it says, respecting the religious and civil minorities, uh, rights of the minorities. We were turned by Balfour and the British authorities at the time Minorities with only civil and religious rights. We have no national rights. Why do you think and things they, are going your way? The, uh, People are dying because, in huge because, numbers. Uh, they're dying for their cause. And they're dying and because... And that's okay, is it? No, no, no. That's not okay. They're dying because there is a military occupation that is shooting them and killing them. And you and I need to discuss how we stop and they're that. they're not the only ones and shooting and killing, are they? But they're not the, the only when ones. When that began, we were not recognized as a nation. Look at us. You are talking to the Palestinian ambassador to the UK. That came after a hundred years of a generation, after a generation of resistance and resilience and the revolution and Yasser Arafat and all that generation that brought us here to these capitals. And also about the narrative. When it began, Israel was the beacon of democracy for the West. Every one of your generation has taken part in a kibbutz of Israel. Israel was celebrated everywhere. Today, Israel is tarnished in the international media. It's tarnished in the new generations. Everybody and has knows, the peace, Abraham, the Abraham
Abraham peace accords with the Arab states. Yes, yes, you've seen Qatar and how the Arab world expressed their actual, genuine, absolute support and siding with the Palestinian people and their rights. Governments can do whatever. Really? They, they, Rulers, condemn oh, the yes. they condemn the attack on the synagogue. Oh, uh, uh, they condemn uh, the attack on the synagogue. Who, uh, the, I'm talking about the Arab people. What, what, I'm talking what, about the Arab uh, states. Uh, what, what the Arab people uh, have shown in, in, uh, during the World Cup is... Uh, uh, is is an example of where the region is. Now, there are some transactional politics here and there. We have expressed our opinion that these accords did not serve the cause of peace. It broke away from the Arab consensus that normalization should be an incentive and an outcome for peace, not an entry for it. And what we want from has happened because since the signing of these accords, things have become more horrific and more horrible doubling of the settlement activities, all that happened in the last two years on the record, the highest number of Palestinians killed. Hossam so, Didn't help. Hossam Zamla, thank you very much. We've run out of time. Thanks for being on Conflict Zone. You're most welcome.